All right, one more time. Let's try it just one more time. LGD Ten seconds remaining. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the World Esports Championships Five here on Beyond the Summit remaining. Two. Thanks so much for joining us here. We're in the losers bracket, round number one. We've got LGD C Deck versus their yeah. brethren LGD Gaming in a best of three series. Again, my name is Mont. Joining me tonight will be Brax, but I believe he's currently AFK to take care of some business. Um, he'll just jump in whenever he gets back, hopefully, and we'll continue on with the cast. But for now. Uh, a game that probably many would consider to be a little lopsided. Um, LGD Gaming have about a 25 LGD to 75 uh, statistical to advantage, or I guess that's what uh, the, the bets are, the odds, I should say, uh, roughly. About 70-30, about um, if you're being generous, I suppose. So LGD see like a team that we saw yesterday, actually, and they got pummeled, absolutely pummeled by Nabi. So LGD see like are looking to rebound. LGD Gaming... Five believe went down to cloud nine which was a rather close series went to three games and actually took a long Seven time, time. Uh, and for people like us that are in america like ld and i obviously we we had to stay up a bit to cast the games ld obviously more so than me but of course he's in the west coast so he has a bit more time to work with so in this game in this series i'm excited because we'll get to see lgd gaming's new lineup obviously mmy joining from dk uh, you've got Siler returning to his old squad in July and Faith as well. Faith formerly of Invictus Gaming in July of CIS. So the only uh, LGD player from the previous incarnation is Yao. Uh, you could count Siler among them, but he's been gone for about a year playing with Vici Gaming. So I do want to let everybody know that we're doing this series and then we're following up with Vici Gaming versus Cloud9. So that'll be a lot of fun to cast as well. LGD Gaming's um, turn to pick. Assuming we get there, everything you know goes well, no bugs or issues happened. Uh, yesterday was a bit hectic, honestly, so hopefully that, that doesn't happen this time around. It's not, not as bad, necessarily. So, for now, a couple of bands coming out. Death Prophet, Lycan for LGD C deck, and then Doom and the Rasta coming out for LGD Gaming. And, uh, some strong bands. Um, Tidehunter's yet to see a ton of bands recently. I mean, more so I think bands are really targeted at other offlaners other than just a Tidehunter. Tidehunter's still good, but he's not necessarily fallen off. They just don't want to ban him. They'll leave him open. You can maybe deal with him. Obviously, he's very tanky. He's going to get a decent amount of farm. Batrider is the pickup for LGD Gaming here. and This is not a huge surprise. They love this hero, so we'll see where they landed up. Most likely in the offlane. We'll see who picks it up for LGD. Um, I'm assuming that the lineup and the roles are still the same for LGD. Faith is probably going to be supporting alongside MMY. Siler usually plays the carry. Then Yao is going to be in the offlane, which maybe lives in July into the mid lane. I'm not sure if that's actually what they're going to do, but that's what it would make sense to me. Again, I didn't see the C9 LGD game or any of the LGD games yesterday, so uh, that's just something I'm throwing out there, spitballing even. Razor and Face is void now for LGD C deck. Uh, it's very solid heroes. Razor, obviously, uh, really good with Eye of the Storm. Faces Void with Chronosphere. A lot of lockdown. Good stuff there. Um, yeah. Ten seconds remaining. I don't know how to do that. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Skyrath made. LGD Gaming's turn to ban. All right, hold on. I'm just fixing something real quick, guys. Ten seconds remaining. Hmm. Five seconds. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, I didn't know that was uh, a thing. I don't know if it fixed it, Reserve but time. oh, that's not good. I need help. All right, I think we're good now. All right, hopefully that fixed everything. Hopefully we're not hosting anymore. 
Excellent. I think we fixed it. I did not know that was a thing. That's actually really annoying to me. I didn't know that was happening. It, it just kind of happened that way. But All right, so apparently the, the other channel, BTS1, was hosted on BTS2. Everyone refresh now real quick just to make sure that you have the stream going. And yeah, that should be good now, hopefully. So, all right. <laughs> Thank you to Theban for fixing that, or helping me fix it, rather. And, uh, well, jumping back into the draft, Scarath Mage was picked up against uh, LGVC, like LG, LG Gaming, going ahead and picking up the Scarath Mage against Faceless Void. So that's interesting. Um, not that surprising against the Faceless Void. You just throw down the Mystic Flare and he's got to be a little bit wary of it. Although you just kind of step to the side and you're good to go. So and that should be nice. Earthshaker, banned out. So for Razor Faces remaining. Void, looks like you'd probably have the Faceless Void going into the... Um, either remaining. safe or offlane. Razor's going to be going mid more than likely. We've seen a lot of safe lane voids recently. So I Reserve wouldn't expect time. that to be uh, that big of an issue if they send him there. And yeah. Five seconds remaining. Meanwhile, Dyer it's an apparition banned out. On the other team, Morphling. I really like the fact that teams are starting Dyer to ban on Earthshaker. I think that hero is really good. If you can get uh, kind of snowballing with him. Fish is really strong, I think. Invoker's picked up for C deck now. An interesting choice. Um, really solid for split pushing, obviously, with Quas Exhort. Faces Void, Chronosphere, plus Sunstrike is a combo that you have to really just deal with. And it's very, very tough. I mean, it's just a lot of damage coming out of your way if you get caught with the Chronosphere. You can maybe go for something that can deal with the Faces Void, like a Silencer, where you can't get his Chrono off. You kind of do that against a Brewmaster from time to time, which, by the way, is still available. Ten and I think LGD can run it if they want to. They have the Skyrath. There's nothing silencing them right now, and Chronosphere would Five not be that remaining. great against a Brewmaster. So I think... Oh, they're going to go for a Naga here, though, for Dyer LGD Team Gaming. Pick. Now, the question is, do they run it as a, a support or do they run it as a farmer? Like I said, I haven't seen too much of LGD recently, but uh, you could go for either here. In the mid lane against Invoker, should be pretty okay. Have a decent amount of armor. Cold LGD Snap shouldn't do that much. Yeah, I think Invoker might not be able to kill the Naga, and she's going to do okay for farming. LGD Cedek pick up Lion, though, which uh, is a lot of nuke damage they have on their team now. With Invoker Sunstrike, with Lion throwing out his ultimate, or even just Earth Spike inside the Hex, Dyer plus the initiation with Hex uh, as well is really nice, or the Chronosphere, rather. But Centaur Warner now picked up for LGD Gaming, and one more to go for both sides. So Centaur Stampede into a Batrider Lasso. Really strong. Skyrath as well to chase somebody down with his Arcane Bolts Ten seconds and Mystic remaining. Flares. It's pretty good. I think it's pretty good stuff. It's pretty good. Five seconds a couple of remaining. bands coming through here in just a moment. Last one's coming in. Reserve time. Man, Brax got the better end of this deal. He ditched for the uh, the rough part, the draft. That's, that's the part that I think is uh, sometimes the most difficult to deal with, especially when you're solo casting and you're trying to theory craft. It can be hard. LGD Gaming's turn to ban. LGD, go ahead and get ready to ban their next hero. Whereas on the other side, C deck ban out the Rubik just to make sure there's no spell steal, which uh, is pretty good. I think stealing Ten anything from Wine could be remaining. huge, like obviously his finger. But that's about it. I don't know Five if Rubik would have been that big remaining. of a deal here. I guess Skyrath Rubik as a support combo they're kind of Five scared of, but I feel like maybe you pick Avenge and that's a bit more threatening. We saw Navi play it really well yesterday with Skyrath and Venge. I'm a real big fan of that dual support. Cedic, though, they're just going to go ahead and pick up their last hero here, and should be another support, as they already have Razor, Faces Void, and their Invoker. Those are going to be your core heroes for Cedic. So um, next hero should be something that actually is, a, I think, a bit quicker. Line's move speed's not quite there, and uh, maybe a bit more initiation heavy. I'm not sure. Somebody that can frontline it. An Earthshaker would have been great here, but they banned it out. There's no Sand King either. Reserve so I don't time. know. We'll see how it goes. C deck now with an interesting draft. And this one could be uh, a, a problem here for LGD Gaming, especially if this Naga Siren is played as a core. But right now, they already have a Centaur. They have a Bat Rider. So maybe you're looking at a four or two position Bat Centaur off or Centaur safe lane, which makes more sense to me now. Then you do Bat Rider off lane, Skyrath with the support, maybe Naga mid and then pick another support with your last pick here for LGD Gaming. For C deck, now what do they pick though? I'm just trying to think of supports that work here. I think something with a lockdown. No, they don't need lockdown. They want Lich. And 
Lich Razor, okay. Lich Faces Void, plus Chain Frost inside of a Chronosphere is kind of disgusting when you think about it. It's that old tried and true um, draft that we used to see uh, a while back, but it's still pretty good. Meanwhile, LGD Gaming, they go for the IO. So that'll be their second to support on top of the Scarath Mage. They don't really have lockdown from the supports. They have Concussive Shot, obviously. Uh, but they'll get the lockdown from Yao, and they'll get it from in July as well. Silar will be playing the Nagasire. Now the question is, do you play the safe lane, or do you send Yao safe lane with the Io and the Skyrath Mage and have him form a very fast blink? All these questions will be answered, hopefully soon. Again, thanks for joining us. Brax will be here shortly. I imagine now that the draft's done, he'll be here any moment now, so... He did have to go take care of some personal business, so hopefully he'll be here and get into this game. This could be a very quick 2-0 here for LGD Gaming, or maybe see that can take it to LGD. It's going to be hard to distinguish the two teams, that's for sure. Oh no, a disconnect already coming out. Momo, yeah, please. He will disconnect, maybe a bit of an issue in terms of ping, maybe some computer problems. And uh, we'll have to wait and see. So... I'm excited. I, I don't get to see the Io with like a Naga Siren too often, but it's probably just going to be paired with the Centaur. It'll be a pretty easy way to get kills, and it keeps them all over the map. So if Invoker's trying to split post with his Forge Spirits and with his uh, Necro Book, then all of a sudden Io could just relocate on top of the Invoker and maybe just shut him down, grab a kill um, with the Centaur, or even with the Naga if she's farmed enough. So that's the thing. Silar is one of the best farmers, obviously. You know, he's maybe not as good as a Burning, say, or uh, maybe even How. How, I think, fits more of a kind of aggressive play style than Siler does. Siler is just the tried and true farmer. You talk about Siler Anti-Mage, and it's right up there with Burning Anti-Mage. Um, he will be playing the Naga, though. So kind of going back to TI2, essentially. And uh, looks like they will, at least for now, just send all of their heroes down to the safe lane. And we'll have to see how things move along as we get into this game. Game number one here of the loser's bracket, first round. Well, let's get into some introductions. For the Faceless Void, it's going to be 3-3-3 three, three, three from LGD Cedek. He'll be on that hero. Up to the top lane, Invoker is being played by... I want to say HHH, but I'm not sure. Guard is going to be on the line. Maybe we'll be on the Razor. And we'll have Q on the Lich to round up the lineup of LGD Cedek. On the other side of things, the Radiant team in July on the Batrider will have MMY. Momo Yao will be on the IO. Silar will be on the Naga Siren. Uh, rounding up the back, it's going to be Faith on the Scarath Mage and, of course, Yao on the Centaur Warrunner. So, good stuff. And they're just going to roam around right now and look for something. Just making sure that, obviously, their, their jungle isn't warded here. Making sure that the wards aren't coming out. And there's no early aggression coming out from c -deck. But it is going to be an awful in Faceless Void, so... Will he get a lot of farm here is the question. It is Centaur, Scarath Mage, and Io. There's not really any way I think they kill this hero unless they can get a silence up. But I think with Ancient Seal, it has to be maybe level 2. 3 second silence might not be enough for them to get the kill. They also need Stomp and Double Edge, not just Stomp alone. They need a way to disable this uh, Faceless Void. Of course, he went for Stout Shield first. No Poor Man's Shield just yet. He actually got a lot of regen, and he has the Sentry as well. They have this lane work here as well, so they can see exactly what 333 is doing in the lane. Up top, you have, of course... In July, uh, obviously on the Batrider. Boots first. He's got his Observer Ward as well. And uh, he should have a great time with Boots, obviously. And it looks like a dual lane uh, as of right now. And the Lich off lane dual lane, we see very often when you see this hero in the game. Lich will go. He'll maybe get a couple points of sacrifice. Throw up the Ice Armor as well if he decides to get it. And then Frost Blast on top of that. Early gank potential, though, from LGD. They smoke up. They're wrapping around. There's also a DD rune in that top rune spot. Maybe already using a static link on Silar. And this is going to be the problem. Silar will have to get a lot of his last hits from Riptide here. Uh, he has no damage right now. And with no ensnare as well, it's going to be kind of difficult to get this kill on maybe. DD is going to go. Uh, MMY will pick it up. And Faith is here on the backside. No observer ward for the dire team uh, on that cliff. So they'll have to be careful. They know that they're off the map right now. Maybe he's playing a bit back, but they will go. There's the tethering. Concussive shot as well. Riptide actually missed, or did it hit and just did no damage. Silar taking a lick from the tower, though. Right click. Meanwhile, Faith will get the kill. First blood and the tower. Not doing enough damage for Silar to go down. They will get the kill. That's huge. If Silar had gotten that kill, it would have been even bigger. But a good start for the supports of LGD and already shutting down maybe early on in this game. Ooh. Good stuff. 
Although it didn't really give much to Silar. I think maybe his battle already came out. Yeah, he's just growing it right now. I actually used two charges, have one charge left to make sure that that move speed on the career doesn't decrease. MMY headed top with Faith as well, but now they're going to wrap around and maybe go on mid again. Maybe has no more static link. He has Plasma Field, only level one though, but the tower... Well, that's uh, where the creep uh, is, obviously. It's right underneath this tower, so... Garter and, of course, the Invoker up here in the top lane. Going for Sunstrike early on, so if they can get some sort of disable going, they can throw this, but... Level 1 Substrike only does 100 damage, so not the biggest nuke in the world. Meanwhile, mid lane maybe getting Static Link yet again. Top lane rotation is coming through. Faith has the Concussive Shot ready to go. MMY with his Tether as well. And C-Dex Invoker and Garter are just sitting back. Very far back, in fact. And July still has boots. He's going to stick you now, and this gives them a better chance at the gank here. The lane is still pushing out, however. Faith is ready for the concussive shot. There's the Firefly, and in July is just being aggressive here. And, and they know that the heroes are missing, so Cedex not willing to venture outside of pretty much this area. In July, still Fireflyed up. Sticky Napalm. There's the tether. Now concussive shot going through. This is the dive. Big earth spike, however, but meanwhile, Cedex Invoker taking a lot of damage. Sunstrike gonna be off the mark. Garter can't get the kill. Faith, Arcane Bolt ready in one second. The tower still taking aggro now on Faith. Garner in trouble. Getting dove here. One more right click from in July. Not enough. So close. Will he get it? Sticky Napalm still chasing him down. There's the TP, but it doesn't matter. Garner's already dead. Invoker comes back in. No cold snap. Just a right click here. And it looks like, obviously, the Razor's not even rotating. In July will make his way out of there. 3-0. LGD already running off to a good start here. Cedic in a bit of trouble. Nope. <sighs> Sunstrike. Wasn't near it. I don't know where that Sunstrike was, but it certainly wasn't near the Batrider. So Angelai gets away. He's level 4 now, too. Any stacks going on here? Silar is taking the majority of them in the jungle currently with Riptide. Uh, he's got a regen rune. Based Ice Frog giving him a regen rune as well. Uh, anything else on the Courier? No. So just Boots and a Bottle. Not having necessarily the best time. 13 last hits to 17 of maybe, but obviously when you're against a Razor, that will happen. He'll just static link you, take all of your damage, and then what do you do? 3-3-3 three, three, three sitting almost at level 4 in a PMS. So there's that. He is getting some farm. He's got 17 last hits, but the experience is definitely going in favor of the Batrider. But a lot of his farm has come from, obviously, kills. So, well, kills and assist. One kill, one assist. No Tranquils for him yet, and then he'll work towards his Blink Dagger probably after getting those. Silar picks up an Invis Rune. It's great that he's getting Rune Control, making sure maybe he doesn't get a part of it. Uh, I think his bottle is flying out to him right now, and a TP scroll. So Silar is actually getting back into it. 17 last hits here. There's the Static Link going again. Silar's not nearly fast enough to get away from this. He loses 42 damage. Faith and MMY are here, ready to go. Does Silar have a point in Snare? No, he doesn't, so... Again, difficult to kill, maybe. They got the first blood, but... What is this thing? Oh, top lane dive coming through. Ancient Seal, Arcane Bolt. Meanwhile, Invoker about to fall again, and will the right click? No! Gets hexed up in July still. Grabbing one kill, maybe a second as well. Maybe on the backside coming through with the Plasma Field. Now they will get the other kill. Two for two trade thus far. Faith trying to get out. Iowa's already died as well. Do they have a slow with the Frost Blast? No. Even if they did, he's too slow to catch up to Faith, who has boots, by the way. And his move speed with the Skywrath Mage is ridiculous. Maybe he's going to head back mid. Great rotation. Good TP to get up there and help out his team. They get two kills and they get back on the board. But of course, this leaves Silo to farm a bit more. And his Aquila now done. Maybe you go for a quelling and then start building into your ratings. I'm not sure. But it's going to be tough. Static Link going. Actually doesn't leach any damage from Silar. That's huge. Silar can actually just sit here and rip side and right click now. Courier. Which you can ensnare, by the way. Keep that in mind. Tether. In July in the top lane. Meanwhile, Concussive Shot did hit on Q. There's the Firefly. Arcane Bolt. These Earth Spikes are great from Garter, but they're not enough to stop the aggression. In July getting low, but it doesn't matter. Faith now tanking the tower. Sunstrike only clips. In July doesn't even do that much damage. Now he's got a double kill. Stampy to get him out of there as well. Maybe. TP's up again to get nothing. And in July will Firefly and walk back towards the Tier 1 tower. Plasma Field. It will catch two. Wow, maybe getting into it. I thought for sure he wasn't going to be able to get that kill, but he gets two instead. Jeez. Alright, Cedek. That's a big pickup for him. He's, uh, he's going to have his phase boots after that as well. Very nice. And Invoker going to go ahead and just uh, work on at least putting some damage onto this tier 1 tower, but he's got 20 last hits right now. He's died twice. Not been involved in too many kills. 
they've given a lot of room to Seller because they rotated up top. So that's unfortunate. Dyer's Bottom lane, Yao's backing attack. off for the time being. Blink Dagger status, about 1,500 away. Hello, Mott? Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, Brax. It's it's good to see you here. You missed the the draft, which is, in my opinion, the most most uh, boring part of Dota, so I'm glad that you can get in for the rest of this game. Really? You think that's boring? For me, it is. Okay, for me, it's quite interesting. Well, the thing is, see, I don't have the insight that you have, and so when I try to theorycraft, I end up sounding like an idiot, and doing it alone is very difficult for me, but I don't know. When I have somebody else with me, it's fun, so. Theory crafting in general just makes you sound like an idiot. Doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, true. Mott, can I ask you for a favor? Sure, what's that? Can you please refer to me as Cat in the Hat 14? Cat in it's the Hat 14. Game name. Brax, yes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. That's a tough uh, That's a tough order. <sighs> okay, well, I just like to let people know that I'm the 14th Cat in the Hat. 1 through 13 were all taken, so <laughs> I went with this as my gamer tag. Why were you Cat in the Hat in the first place? I like cats, I like hats, why not put them together? It has nothing to do with Dr. Seuss? No. Oh, okay. Well. Okay, maybe a little. <laughs> So Dang, how you been? How, how you been, Brax? Uh, we haven't talked in some time. Yeah, last time I saw you was uh, briefly at TI. Yes, yes, yes. You were off I doing your own thing. I was off doing my own thing, but we're back now. Yes. I've been doing all right. Mm -hmm. It's nice to enjoy some quality Dota between LGD and LGD C deck. You know, the C deck team has actually been quite impressive. You know, people uh, usually refer to this team as like a you know a B team, an unknown team, or whatever. But right. They're not bad at all. These guys are all, um, you know, they're all like uh, the ladder kind of climbing players, you know, the higher rated matchmaking players Yeah. Uh, put together. And they're all, uh, you know, decent. They just lack some experience, but they're slowly getting there. Yeah, I've seen that too. And Theban mentioned that last night as well. Uh, they certainly don't look like a team that's, I mean, they had a rough set of games last night, but they're going to Chronosphere in July now. He's going to get Ancient Sealed. There will be a Sun Strike, but the damage just isn't there yet, but an Earth Spike coming through as well. Chain Frost going out. Will this balance between the both of them? MMY splits right at the last second. It looks like MMY will be saved from the brunt of the damage, but they still got the kill on the Batrider. All right, a good pickup. They, uh, C-Deck have had a rough early game here. Uh, a lot of really great rotations from LGD, but they're starting to get back into it, I think, with the help especially of uh, the Razor, maybe getting a couple of double kills, and now they're pushing into the top lane. Radiance top tower is under this Razor is actually quite geared. Dyer's bottom tower is Looks under like you had a good start. Oh, Mott, how do I do the uh, the mic thing? For what? In game? Yeah, yeah, for in game. Do I need you, to do that? You just go to your options and then go to audio and then just turn enable open mic. Uh, it should be somewhere over there in the audio section. Okay, and I want to mute you. Oh, yeah, that's true because I'm Dyer's probably coming up twice. And yeah, mute, mute co broadcasters on or something like that. Okay, I found it. Good, excellent. So, Siler's playing. Obviously, a farming Naga Siren in the mid, 1700 gold. Attack. He's done all right. He got shut down a bit early because he was against uh, maybe, but they've put pressure on other lanes, so that forces maybe out of the mid lane and gives Sylar free farm mid, and obviously they're stacking the jungle. And well, they're gonna smoke mid super maybe as well. Oh, that's a good kill. move. No, he's dead. He's I think. Toast. Yeah, <laughs> ancient seal coming out. There's the lasso. And they're gonna commit a lot for this, but they get the kill. And actually, they cancel the TP as well. I think that was uh, Lion TPing in, but decided against it. Yeah, there's no way they can defend this tower. This thing's done. You know, the Naga actually has a pretty good farm against the Razor. I'm sure he jungled for the most part of it, and it's a lot of jungle creeps. But, um, you know, Radiance should come up any time between, like, 13, 14 minutes at his rate. Yeah, and that's not bad, uh, especially because, like you said, he was up against the Razor. He hasn't gone down. He was involved in First Blood, so I think, really, it's just LGD supports are making a lot of space for Silar here. Um, and obviously, in July now getting online as well, almost with his Blink Dagger. Um, at about 11 minutes, so pretty good timing. Yeah, this is such an LGD lineup. They like the Centaur Batrider with the super hard carry. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, solid. that's just Silar's hero, though, or, or one of them anyways, just these farming heroes, and I was talking about it. I, I mean, I'm sure they run more semi-carry lineups for Silar, but I just haven't seen it recently. It's really just about the hard carries for him. To be fair, I haven't seen too much LGD, though, so... Yeah, a lot of us haven't, you know. We've only played uh, such a small amount of games. That's true. It's a bit Dyer's different, obviously. You guys playing in a bunch of different tournaments back in the West, so you get to see a lot of the Western teams. 
But yeah, there's not so many Eastern tournaments though. Well, yet at least. Yeah, but we're starting to get into it though, and I'm, I'm just glad to be back wa watching these teams, especially Vici Gaming really impressed me yesterday as well. Newbie did pretty well in their games, but um, you know, I, I'm excited to see what these teams can bring. So. Yeah, VG have been playing quite good. They've applied a lot of pressure and pushed towers really quick. Black has been really impressed with me as well. Um, there are a lot of questions that people were asking of him as a player, but he's looks solid, so. Dyer's bottom tower that was good. I'm happy for him. Deny and the bottom tier attack. 1 tower coming up for maybe. So 74 last hits for Sadler now. The top of the net worth chart. About 700 gold away from the relic. Stampede top. Stomp onto two. Mystic Flare. Invoker's dead as hell. Garter getting blown up by the, of course, Arcane Bolt. Yao taking the Chain Frost and Frost Blast to the face. Chain Frost is still bouncing, but it looks like it should be good to go. They get two quick kills. Great stomp from Yao, though, to start things off. Ooh. Okay, so that was where they uh, revealed the Blink Daggers. They just got them, they smoked up, and they defended the tower successfully. Right. Um, they won't be able to push this tower because the Razor's pushing on the, on the opposite side of the map, it looks like. Oh, static Link on Siler. Oh. I'm just gonna lose some damage. Maybe he might dive this. He doesn't have the storm. Doesn't have plasma field. He's selling a lot of damage though, up to 112 now. But Silo should Boy, be able to get away. Up. No, there's the boy. Yeah, I didn't see him. Now the chrono and the right click. They give 333 the kill. But top lane, more action happening. Invoker getting caught out. While they saw Invoker go down bottom, they realized that they had another opportunity to grab a kill. They go top. They get a kill. They're diving past the tower, but they can't get Q. Not yet, anyway. Blink up in about a second, but he doesn't want to go for Q, and they'll just try to take this tier one tower top. Maybe for a trade here. Uh, uh, that's a pretty good play because they, um, the LGD team used a lot more resources to actually uh, go for top tower. Mm -hmm. While it only took LGD C deck, you know, the Razor was already farming the lane, and Void was nearby. It's like, a, you know, all the other heroes on their team are still doing other things, while LGD have to commit a lot more heroes to one objective, and they still didn't even take the tower. But they do have their ults coming up soon, so they'll probably be able to take it soon. Blink, stomp, Q, oh, okay. You you shouldn't have been there, my friend. That was not the place to be. Faith running in, he's got Arcane Bolt, he's got Mystic Flare as well. But, big Earth Spike coming through. Meanwhile, 3 3 is still alive. He'll be able to time walk away. That looked like he would have died there, but big Earth Spike coming out from the side of Garter. Nicely done. You know, I'm actually quite surprised that um, LGD Cedic took that fight there. I know he got picked off, but for them to continue to go in there was quite uh, strange because they don't have ultimates up and they yeah. know that LGD's no ultimates chrono. are coming up soon. Yep. So, interesting that they take the fight, but Carter That's walks a little too close to the tower and he dies as well. Uh, just a couple of positioning errors it feels like for Cedic, just getting caught out. Um, I think that's been the story of the game thus far, especially early on, so... LGD are taking what they can get right now. They're not trying to force anything too crazily. And the thing is, again, like they can't really fight at their full capacity until Siler's online. And he is, he's got his relic now if he wants to go buy it. But that's about all they've got on the Sinaga. Top lane tower, gone. But Yao should theoretically die for this. No, gets relocated out. Nice play coming out from MMY. They'll probably just leave Yao here. He's got a TP top, actually. And uh, that will leave, of course, the IO here to go down. And he'll try to tether away to Yao, I believe. Try. But will he make it? No, get stopped immediately. And actually, uh, maybe he's going to try to go to town. Cold Snap goes through as well, and MMY falls immediately. So, it's a good try. You know, experience that really shows, like, that sequence of events top lane. Most teams wouldn't even try to defend that tower when they know they can't take the fight in the first place. And they weren't even there as five if they really, really wanted to. It's like half the team was there with their cooldowns. Not up yet. Yeah. It's kind of strange. Yeah. Let's and, see. Um, we'll keep going. They're still playing uh, 4v5 right now. Naga's still trying to finish his radiance. But actually, looks like he wants to sleep initiate on this fight here. Yeah. If that's all he can do, that's perfect. I mean, they've got plenty of damage, and a huge stomp would be exactly what they need. Even Ancient Seal on the Faceless Void to stop that Chronosphere. Big stop, Mystic Flare as well. Meanwhile, maybe in some trouble. Still alive. Nice mech. There's the Song of the Siren. Chain Frost bouncing through. Not doing damage, obviously, but. They will back away. Well, actually, did a bit of damage to MMY as Faith as well, but and Snare about to go. No, Sadler in trouble. Gets Cold Snap. Meanwhile, Lasso bringing Garter back to the fight as well. Yeah, jumping back with the blink. There's the stomp and double edge. Cleans him up. Faith getting low. He'll back up. Still about to fall. The Forge Spirit's doing work, but not enough. Woo, Faith got low, but they do take the fight. The song helps. Sadler comes in. They sleep, obviously. The face is void. He can't get the right click and get a hero to kill. Oh, they're uh -oh. not done yet. Oh, God. Maybe. Blink, Bye, stomp, maybe. and he should be dead here. Oh, yeah, double edge from Yao. And this is it. This is the combo they're looking for. The IO um, Centaur is doing some work this game. 
Uh, one of the biggest counters to Void is Naga Siren. When you song, you reset the fight, and Void really doesn't do a whole lot without Chrono. So it was quite good of him to be in that fight there. Even though it was only one kill, it could have been much, much worse. Whoever gets Chrono usually dies instantly, but mm. because of the song, it just doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, and he wasn't even in the best position to song. He was a little far away from the, the Chronosphere, but nonetheless, it still did enough work where they yeah. all survived. It was just good enough to the point where uh, he can't get caught and he can stop any follow-up. Yeah. I got nervous there for Satellite for a bit. I was like, oh, don't die, but he was all right. He's got a DD room now and his ratings is done, so that's good. 16 minutes, pretty, pretty good stuff. Well, oh. the Naga game begins. Fun stuff. <laughs> we could see another 40 minutes of this easily. At least 40 minutes, potentially. But Siler can farm pretty quick now, now that he has the ratings. Um, I actually think they'll uh, push with the radiance. Naga will push in the two opposite lanes, while the four heroes from LGD will sit and push one lane. Mm -hmm. And then he'll just run the hero there while uh, they siege the tower, and he sits back far enough for sleep. And then... Uh, after his first set of illusions, he'll start using the next set to hit towers. So it's not kind of like what we used to see with the Naga, who just you get your six items and then start fighting. It's more so you want to be involved early on, I guess. Right, exactly. Oh, Salar. Okay, this going to be a big chrono here. Time walk in, Chronosphere. He actually only gets one, and that's oh. Yao. Lasso comes through as well. That'll be on Garter. There's the song. Mystic Flare doing some work the Ancient Seal as well. Meanwhile, Earth Spike, but it doesn't matter. Garter gets blown up. Meanwhile, the Stampede goes, stop onto three, double edge onto one, maybe getting blown up as well. Now the IO Spirit's doing work, the Invoker falls quickly, maybe Static Blinks, but he can't do much in this situation. Blink is up in two, but they already have it for the Bat Rider. Arcane Bolt, Chain Frost flies through, Q tries to get out, Stomp is going to say no sir. Double kill for Yao, they're still going, they want maybe, and they might find him. They might dive this, we'll see. Yeah, I was thinking about it. disaster. He's so sticky and icky, can't even move. Seven stacks, he's like, what do I do guys, help team. No, oh, triple kill. That's disgusting. Yep. So sticky. The stickiest indeed. So, Cat in a Hat 14. How's it looking yes. for C-Deck right now? It's looking grim. You know, that was quite a bit uh, misplay. I don't think they would still take the fight, but it would have gone a bit better. The He actually had vision of the Naga with the Skyrath Mage right next to them, but he uh, time walked over them and went for the Centaur instead. Yeah. He should have uh, prioritized the Naga Siren. He I was surprised he did that. Mage. I was like, oh, Chronosphere right here. Like, it's it's right here. You don't even have to time walk. Just throw it down. But Yeah, the, the play was right in front of his face, but he didn't go for it. I mean, chances are they'll kill the Skyrath Mage with the Sun Strike and a couple auto attacks, and then uh, the rest of his team dies. But it's still awkward. Yeah. You know, I just don't think Yao, who's an inherently tanky ass hero, is going to be your best target. Uh, he does yeah, have the mech too, so. He's not going to die in Kono no. at all. Nope. Uh, Faces Void sitting now on a Midas Treads, and it looks like he's going to be going for an Agnum Scepter as well. So just straight up utility, none of this Mask of Madness into like a Maelstrom or anything type of build that we see so often. And uh, that's going to become an issue. They have damage from maybe. Obviously, the Invoker's not really got any damage at this point other than his Forge Spirits and his Exhort. Um, and they're really relying a lot on magic damage as well, so this is going to be very difficult as Salar is already at bots and uh, is working on just cleaning out these uh, lanes. Yeah, LGD Sidex heroes, uh, they have quite a hard time pushing lanes out against Naga Siren. That's... Razor's the best of them. Razor's not even very good at that unless you spam your ult every creep wave. I don't know if you want to do that. He will find out in July who fireflies away. Static Link does next to nothing. So just gets 14 damage away from in July currently. But in July's hunting right now. But he's found almost the entire team of C deck. But looks like uh, they're just going to back away and let Naga do his thing down bottom with Yao and actually MMY here as well. They're ready to make a jump. A bit of a bait, it looks like. Yeah, they're just waiting for him to show. You know, it's like a, it's kind of a mind game thing, you know, like, um, you see the Batrider on the other side of the map, oh, you assume Centaur and Whisper are going to be focusing on that Dyer's side of the map, but they switch it up, and as I say, that bat's probably going to die right now. Yeah, in July, I wanted to go to the side shop for whatever reason, and that looks like he'll die because of it. They, uh, took a bit to kill him, but they get the kill nonetheless, he just walked a bit Dyer's too far, but now maybe bottom lane. Chronosphere is going to go in MMY, he gets Dyer's caught out, but there's the song from Silar immediately to counteract it. Q's here as well, he's got Chain Frost, and he might toss it, but... It looks like they will get away. I mean, why nice tether gets just pretty much all the way across the river here towards Yao, while Siler just retreats the opposite direction. Such a shame. Mass TPs and they can't get anything just because of the song. Yeah, that's that's gonna be a damn nuisance when it gets level three as well. It's just like, oh, that's gonna happen every fight. Well, well. 
Well, yeah. even at two, it pretty much matches the chrono cooldown. True. It's gonna be miserable for him. Well, you could argue so, the item uh, helps for the faces void, but I don't know. If he ever gets there, yeah. and even if he's uh, at this, I wouldn't get at this game. He needs other items. Mm -hmm. oh. Stampede, stomp, invoker, <laughs> and they're gonna go ahead and re relocate him in Y and in July. And great tornado though, and that might stop them. Firefly, Ghost Walk coming in. 3 3 3 is here, but no Chronosphere. They decided to get out. They don't want to deal with that. I missed a kill opportunity, but that was one of the very few. It was quite good. He had a tornado invoked already. Mm -hmm. ah, that would have been his sixth death. Jeez. That's getting real rough. Yeah, pretty much everyone at this point is just going to die to anyone initiating on them, whether it's Centaur or Bat Rider. And Bat already has Blink Force, and he's looking towards the BKB too, so all of a sudden he'll start running amok. And maybe was almost, I mean, I, I guess he was forced to go mech, and then he's building a BKB afterwards, so no agonims for some time, even if like if, if he gets it at all, we'll see. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So, Siler TP's bottom, 2.5k gold in the bank, the rest of the team is top for the most part. They're looking to find a hero to pick off, maybe might be that hero, or a tier 2 tower to take. Which, uh, this is what you were talking about. Push out the other lanes, and then you can walk back and be a part of the team fight. However, Siler is pretty far away from that top lane engagement. Yep, he is. Well, LGDC, like, pretty much, uh, feels screwed at this point. You know, all the lanes are pushing in. They don't know what to do. They're smoking up, though. And they're going straight to the Naga, which is good. This is a kill Probably that... the best play they can make. If they get this kill, it could be huge. But while that happens, top lane, maybe he's going to get lassoed. Ancient Seal and Stomp as well. He'll fall down bottom. There's the Chronosphere. It does catch Silar. He does obviously have Song of the Siren, but they can't get the kill. Look at... They're all on the edge there, but... Oh, Garter just gets the Finger of Death off in time. Meanwhile, there's the Chain Frost coming through. Doesn't bounce into MMY. Meanwhile, in July, getting hexed up. Q and 333 going to work with the right clicks. They grab two there. So they lose maybe in the top lane, but they grab two high priority kills in bottom. You know what, LGDC deck will help you out, we'll get you another kill, we'll waste our ults, get you back in the game. They're <laughs> uh, not really back in the game, but it's nice. They have some momentum now, they can easily get this mid tower. I hope so. They do have Glyph though, and maybe LGD pop up now, looks like they're just gonna let it go. Invoker walks away, Radiance lets his Force Grades do all the work. Top lane though, Yao is pressuring, MMY is behind him. Gem of True Set picked up by MMY as well, so there's the Sun Strike going in. It does a bit of damage to Yao, TP from Invoker. Uh, just kind of scares them away. So, yeah, at least he'll defend the tower, though. And he'll pick up a Necro 1, too. So, Necro 3, maybe if he can get that, they can start taking a couple more towers. Oh, they can. I, I think, I'm pretty sure uh, Necro's working Chronosphere. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's right. Uh, like a book? Yes. Yeah, uh, if Void buys it. Oh, it. okay. It's only if uh, the Void summons it. Alright, I was curious, yep. but... No, I know. So maybe you know, not as good, uh, but... TC did that like a year and a half ago. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. No? No, they lost the game because of it. Oh. That happens. You gotta yeah. try things. You gotta try new things. You do. I'm For sure. That. that was back when Book uh, could get Midas, though. So it just got Midas every time in oh, Chrono. Yeah. All the supports had Midas. Maybe it's different now, but I don't know if anyone's willing to, to go that route. That's a pub build, potentially. It could theoretically be good. But smoke up from LGDC deck. They're going to head top. And they're spread thin because of the pressure that LGD are putting across the lanes. You know, top, Dyer's bottom, top mid. Look at where Siler is now. You look at it. Bottom lane's getting kind of pushed out as well. But here we go. Sea deck are looking for pickoff. They might find in July. Chronosphere will catch. Garter blinks right in. Maybe some miscommunication. There's going to be the meatball jump again as well. The overcharge coming in, but not enough. MMY gets Earth spiked as well, and he'll get hexed, and they're losing two heroes. Now you've got to back up. That's a double kill for the Faces Void, which actually, he's got enough money to buy his uh, Aghanim Scepter now if he still wants to go for that, and looks like he does. He there really wants that Ags. Great fight. You know, they had OBS in their jungle, and they thought they were safe. They weren't expecting the smoke ink, and uh, the Wisp just mistimed his tether, mm -hmm. and he, um, because of it, it didn't... Uh, Relocate midair instead of relocated when it finished the tether, and he uh, got tethered into the chrono. Ugh. Quite unfortunate. It's rough. Yeah. Silo almost has a manta now. Uh, once he gets to like that heart, he's going to be quite difficult to kill. Those That's... illusions are uh, extremely, extremely annoying. That's the thing, and 
for Cedek, it might feel like they're getting back into this, but you also have to, like, in the back of your mind know that Siler's just been free farming for the past, like, 20 minutes. He's uh, 110 CS higher than the next closest person. He is, in terms of net worth, uh, 5k higher, so... He is not a part of these fights. He's farming. He wants to get six slotted, or at least just a couple more items, like you talked about. Oh god, it's just going to be disgusting how much damage you can deal. Right, like uh, LGD C deck, they're not farming the map out, while LGD is. They have four heroes in a lane, and Naga farms the other two, and um, they're getting kills, which is good. But Naga's farming at you know 700 or 800 gold a minute right now, mm. while she goes untouched. And even though they get a kill or two, it doesn't make up at all for the gold deficit. No, the and. A way that LGDC that could get back in is, is regaining map control and somehow warding up the enemy jungle, but that's tough. Especially now that maybe it's getting caught out. They can't even sit under their own tier 2 tower in their bottom lane safely. I think LGD uses smoke for that as well. So they pick up a kill. Relocate back top. There's the Chain Frost going in. Doing some work, but the pipe gets popped up and double edge from Yao cleans up another hero. Lich gets destroyed. Bottom tower goes down as well. And all of a sudden LGD are looking like, hey, maybe we should just go high ground. And they will. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Force the glyph too. So TP's Dyer's coming back. And July has no last for 40 seconds. Tornado's gonna come through, but maybe they can take this tower. At least put ship damage on it and then go from there. But Siler sitting so far back, he doesn't want to be up front in these fights. Just let the illusions and Yao do work. Yeah. It's so hard for uh C deck to engage, because if they go in and chrono, you know, it's no good. The fight will just get reset anyways. But at the same time, they can't just sit there and watch it either. Uh oh Faith is going to get caught out, but Song is... Yep, there it is. Sunstrike, it almost blew up Faith, but he's still got a lot of health. He's going to stick up Mech up as well, and now they just back together. And that's it. exactly what you were describing just happened, so... That's it. For C that it, it almost feels like, well, what do we do at this point? Yeah, they have a hard time, um... It's just they can't take fights, really. It's too difficult for them. The fight gets completely reset and they rely so much on the chrono locking people down that they just can't kill people afterwards. Not to mention the farm difference. So, what would you do earlier in this game to make it so that they're not in this predicament? Maybe kill Naga off a bit more and try to get map control? I don't know. Um, I didn't see the early part of the game, but they need to uh, pressure LGD extremely hard in the early game. Mm -hmm. And um, it's hard to pressure Naga because she can just go to the jungle, and it's extremely hard to gank uh, Radiant's middle lane. Yeah. Middle tower is under it's been an issue for them. Yao actually got caught out. Blink Lasso, relocate in. They'll bring actually 3 through 3 to the high ground. He's Ancient Sealed. He had no time walk anyway, so he's dead. Uh, Batrider looking for more. He's not done just yet. He has no Lasso, though. Meanwhile, they'll lose their tier 2 mid, and potentially the... Uh, Courier, no, they actually stampeded for that. Stomp, it's gonna hit on Garter. Nice BKB timing for Maybe. And we'll keep him alive. Now Siler's going to town. He's getting involved here. He's gotten snare. He's gonna throw it on Maybe. Coming through is in July. Still no lasso ready to go. Blink Stomp should be up in just a second here. And maybe should fall. Can't get the stomp just out of range, but Siler has it in snare in five. They won't dive the tier three tower. They back off the plasma field, doing some work. And obviously the necro unit's coming through as well. Faith takes a lot of that damage from the backlash and um, just three kick, quick kills, and now you've got to defend your high ground yet again. But Salar wants the Invoker. Actually, it doesn't throw out the Ensnare. Instead, he just cuts the Creep Wave, and they want to make sure they can get into this Tier 3 bottom. Hey, Mont, where did the uh, Wisp lane in the beginning of the game? Did he just stack for the Naga mid? Um, no, he was bottom with Yao as well as uh, Faith. But it was more so they were roaming for a long... Like, they sat bottom for like a minute or two, and then they just roamed all over the map and just got kills. They never stopped roaming, I don't think. Okay, and were they against uh, Lich Void? Uh, yes. Yeah, Liz, Lich Void duel. Okay. Which... Actually, oh, Lich, uh, Lich TP top after they were getting dove by, like, Batrider, Faith, and, uh, uh, MMY. So they okay. changed the lanes around, and then they just left Void solo at that point. Okay. So the thing about Lich is, um, in a static lane, he's gonna dominate you just over time with, uh, he'll nuke you over and over and over, and he'll slowly deny the wave. So, um, the best thing you can do against it is either pretty much put your offlaner there, which Centaur, I guess, you know, he doesn't really... He's not too lane dependent, he can go anywhere and farm just pretty okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, roaming, of course, because he can't really react. He's only got a slow, he doesn't have a, you know, some big counter initiate or anything like that. Yeah. And he's, you pretty much know where he is, because you can see the denied creep. Yeah. You know, every 30 seconds or whatever it is. Right. That's sounds like a pretty good move from them. Yeah, they just roamed early on, and he even TP'd, but then they just, they got dove. I mean, they were diving the tier 1 tower top, like, it was, there was no tomorrow. And they got a couple kills that way as well. So, 
when that happened, then you pretty much had no farm on the Invoker at all. Like, he got killed twice early on in the game, and from there it became a bit of an issue. Yeah, I was going to get static linked and hexed. Um, a lot of damage stolen. Ooh, nice song. song. That was a great song. The time walk came right in. But Chronosphere is still available, but the Ancient Seal will stop it. That Rider Lasso, they want to bring down 3-3-3. Maybe he's going to BKB as well. 3-3-3, not dead yet, but he will fall with a double edge. Yao goes down as well. One for one. In July getting chased down, but maybe looking to go on more. Silar as well. He's going to go ahead and rip tide up. Uh, still a one for one trade, but now Ensnare is going to fly. Maybe getting caught out. The right click from the Illusions doesn't do much there, but the Ancient Seal and the kill onto the Lich. Maybe Static Links, but is it enough? The Riptide coming through and the Radiance Burn. That'll get the kill for Silar. Now a three for one trade. Garter, he'll be the fourth to go down and will. He does get his finger off, but doesn't get the kill on Faith, who gets very low. But four dead and a double kill for Silar. And they will definitely take the tier three, at least. Actually, the Raxus is exposed now in this bottom lane. Man, Razor's a strong hero. He's only got uh, half the net worth of Naga, and he's dealing so much damage in these fights. That hero is actually... It, it's its kind of dumb, now that I think about it. But that's just from, that's from yes. my perspective. I would strongly agree with that. Okay, good. OP champ. I actually just played a Razor game. I was Razor, it felt so good. And then we lost, and I got really fucking sad because that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> He's probably got like the highest win rate right now. Uh, he should. In competitive and pubs. How do you lane against that mid? Like, yeah. I just you just wreck people and then you just TP to fights and you hit your R button and your Q button your W button and you win. You just press them all and you win. Yeah, exactly. Oh, seems like you gank them, as uh, LGD did in this game. Yeah, that that was the really impressive thing was getting that first blood, which they actually screwed it up and they missed I think the Riptide from Silar, but they were able to get the kill nonetheless I think. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, since he wants to really dominate his lane, he's gonna be using Static Link and trying to get like the max. Oh, there's a Chrono top lane on Faith. He's relocated. He's gone. <laughs> well, that was a good have, try. They just have so many things to stop the Chrono. You know, they can relocate someone out just, just you know, just directly outside of the Chrono, so they can still fight instead of going all the way back to base. Mm -hmm. That seems like it's the main. Uh, that's the main purpose of the hero in this lineup, to save Naga in case uh, she ever gets chrono They haven't really needed that though, it's other heroes, and Silar's yeah. positioning's been key. He just sits back for the most part. He'll man up like once every so often, as you saw in the mid lane fight and the bottom lane fight, but uh, now that he has a heart, maybe they start going in a bit more. Heart, Manta, Radiance, Bots, and Aquila in a bottle. Pretty good farm for Silar at 33 minutes, his net worth sitting at 2300, or 23,000 rather. GPM almost 700, so yeah, he's getting to that mark. And maybe he's gonna go ahead, static in one of the illusions, but as he does that, he gets blink lassoed on. Sunstrike's gonna go through, does no damage. The Mystic Flare blows up, maybe. Blink forward or time walk forward. Chronosphere on it too. In July and Faith both caught. They'll take some damage, but Faith gets a kill on the backside. Deafening Blast coming through as well. The Chain Frost bouncing, not doing much. It's snared. Now they're chasing down the Invoker. They'll grab another kill. That's a four for uh, zero. Now three, three, three with no time walk. Well, he has it, but he's ancient sealed. And they call GG. They realize, okay, we've lost like seven to eight fights in a row. There's not much we can do here. Siler is way too farmed. That's it. All right. That's game one. So, what do you think uh, they'll do for the next game? Do you think they'll ban either Centaur or Batrider? Because it seems like those are pretty much, you know, the key heroes. The Naga and the Wisp pretty much just seem like they're counters to the to the Void. I think you need to ban some sort of initiation here. Um, and Diao on the Centaur owner certainly done a lot of work. Angel and the Batrider obviously played very well. So I, I'd agree. I, th I think one of the two heroes, probably Bat, most likely. But we don't see that banned too often because then you let other heroes through the pool. And then yeah, maybe you have just, to deal with like a Doom or something. So It's just such a big pool now. What do you ban? You just pretty much have to pick what you want to play against and deal yes, with it. Yes, exactly. Ban the heroes you don't like. Just, all right, screw that hero, banning it. But for the most part, it's, it's kind of rough for CDA because... It seems like LGD felt very comfortable with this draft, and I'm excited to see if they have other heroes they can play. Maybe something like a Yao faces Void, which we saw a lot, I believe, uh, at TI4. But with that being said, it's still a three-game series, and that can come back. Their performances thus far have not been inspiring, but maybe they'll get another win here. Right now, 1-0 for LGD. Guys, thanks for joining us. We'll take a quick break. My name's Mott. With me tonight is Brax. You can follow him on Twitter at twitter.com slash braxlikesdota. Follow me at Twitter.com slash Dota, and uh, we'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Stick around, guys.